Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Rodney Smiling coming to you again with more instruction from God's Holy Word and your daily drive-by. Yeah, okay, for the next part of our series on sex, um, we talked about, you know, being transparent. We talk about telling the truth. We talk about cleaning our hearts. We talk about asking God for the power to overcome the tongue. And we talked about, you know, to not seek after a spouse, but to seek after God and to grow in him and in the knowledge of him. Because the higher you grow, the higher um, the options that God has for you. Amen. And so we got to increase in the Lord, right? We got to increase our knowledge and our understanding in the Lord. But in this next segment, I want to talk to you about something that's a little bit slightly different, but it's something that I want you to consider. Because not only do you need, you know, help in in not seeking after a spouse and allowing God to give unto you that which he has already prepared for you, if it's his will for you to get married in the first place. But today I want to talk to you about something that we all think about when we look at somebody or we meet someone or maybe you, you know, are introduced to someone and and all of a sudden this person seems to be a viable option, you know, and you get excited, you know, you find yourself getting excited about, wow, you know, you know, our conversation is good, you know, uh, he or she is saved, you know, that's a point. Let me pause right there for effect, right? Y'all that are out there, and I'm sorry I had to say it that way, but it is something else when you godly women or godly men are choosing people who are not godly, who say, oh yeah, I believe in God, but they don't go to church and they don't study their word and they don't pray, you know, and, and you, you think they're godly. That's a sidebar. We'll talk about that later on. But I want to talk to you today about, you know, um, compatibility. You know, when we look at someone who we start to think, wow, this person seems to be compatible for me. And what we end up doing is that we get excited and we sometimes try to rush the commitment. We try to rush the, the, you know, the excitement and the realization of it all. And so I want to encourage you today, you know, um, one of the things that, and this, you may not see this, but just something that the Holy Ghost is revealing to me. Um, when, when the disciples went out and they said, my God, they said, you know, even the devils are obedient to us through your name. And Christ said, don't rejoice about that, but rejoice rather that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And so from that verse, I want to talk to you all about realizing that whatever God has written for you is for you. We need not rush into things happening in the order or the timing that we believe they should happen. Understand this. You know, that what God has ordained from your life cannot be changed. For the word of God says, my word shall not return to me void, but it's going to accomplish everything that I have determined for it to do. So I want to encourage you today, back off, back off and tell yourself to back off. Because sometimes if we take the meal out of the oven before it's done, then something that could have been good for you now turns out bad for you. Uh, many of us have experienced um, getting together with somebody and rushing things. Some of you have had premarital sex because of the fact of that you're with this person and this person says, wow, you know, you're my everything and I'm going to marry you. And maybe they gave you an engagement ring. And since you in your mind thinking, well, we're practically married anyway. So let me do that. But the word of God tells us that the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. And that is adultery, 
fornication, lasciviousness, um, murder, wrath. You got to understand that your flesh will always try to rush God. The scripture tells us about Saul, King Saul, who was looking for the prophet to seek God on his behalf. And he couldn't find the prophet. So he decided to put on the eprod and to wear it himself and to go out and to inquire in God on his own. And I'm here to tell you that there was even a scripture where it talks about that there were men who offered up strange fire unto God. You got to understand that the scripture says our times are in his hands. You've got to trust in God more than you trust yourself. And I know it's human nature, my God. It's human nature to get excited. It's human na nature to find yourself getting, you know, to rush the thing and get it, you know, wow, you know, this feels good. And if only we could take it to the next level, it's gonna feel better. But I'm here to tell you, listen, it's important to know that, you know, that when the person that God has for you come in your pathway, there's no doubt in their mind, even if they're taking time. There's no doubt because God assures them. The scripture says that a virtuous woman does her husband good and not evil all the days of her life. So you women out there, you got to understand the role that you have to play. And men, you have to understand the role you have to play. And when we rush one another into jumping into that role that may be in God's mind, in God's wisdom, they're not ready for yet. They're not ready for that responsibility. They're not ready for that total commitment. You know, when you're dating and, you know, when you get engaged and you think about getting married, oh man, it seems to be like heaven, you know? But then once you get married, and the realization of everything comes into you, then it's like, okay, now what do I do now? So I wanna encourage you. I wanna encourage you. The scripture says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he's gonna strengthen your heart. And I have to share these with you because of the fact of that the next thing we're gonna talk about, we're going into some deep stuff that may cause your heart to start longing. It may cause your heart to start wondering. It may cause your heart to start picking and choosing. But you got to take the time right now and really pray to God and say, God, help me to wait on you. I'm not waiting on my spouse because my spouse is being prepared by my God. I'm waiting on my God. See, when you wait on God, then you realize that, hey, do I want something that's half done? No. Because although, you know, in my life, there's some things that God is working on me. There's some things that God is working on you. There's some attitude adjustments. There's some humilities. There's some, you know, this destruction of selfishness that has to be, you know, pushed away from. And so God is intricately involved in your life. And so when you think that you are compatible with somebody, wait, because what you see may not be what you're getting. There may be a whole lot more to that picture. Amen? And so wait on the Lord. Wait on the Father. And how do you wait on the Father? Not just saying, God, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, God, until you show me my spouse. I'm waiting, God. Is it her? Is it her? Is it her? No, no, no. Waiting on the Lord is waiting, sitting at the feet of our Lord and saying, God, oh, I just want to know you. I want to know you because when I know you, when I come to know you and I am um, godly with contentment with my father, oh, then when he presents something to me, I see it as a gift, a gift, not, not something that, oh, this is for me. No, it's a gift that God is bringing to help me accomplish what God would desire for me to do. And she will fit because she'll see that ministry that God has given her. I'm here to tell you, wait. 
<laughs> I love you. Take care. Bye.